How would you like to die like soldiers? We're now in 1813, we started in 1808, that's the Napoleonic Wars, and essentially the sharp stories are the Duke of Wellington fighting Napoleon in Spain. I think one of the main reasons for sharp success is that it is unashamedly different. We take it very seriously, the making of sharp. We don't take a cynical view that this is what the audience wants and we'll give it to them. People tell me how refreshing it is to have something different. Choosing the writer to adapt a series of books is a very, very tricky decision. And Owen Harris was chosen because he has a feeling for what I call the big screen. He has a feeling for the size and the scale of a big production. He has interpreted the Bernard Cornwell novels as if really they are John Ford books or John Ford films. And that's part of what we wanted. Uh, we shoot these films on Super 16. We shoot them in a widescreen format. We think of them as, as movies. And Owen is the man to write uh, with a, a great sense of flair, a great sense of style, and also with a sense of humour. At stake in Sharp is, in fact, a struggle with the greatest dictator of his time in Europe. I mean, Napoleon is the Stalin of his time, the Hitler of his time. So great matters are at issue. I mean, that may not seem to matter, but that actually matters tremendously because very like, it's very like the Bond films, except it's more real, in that the structure of a Sharp film is like M, in, as in Bond, in the shape of Wellington, calls in his head of intelligence and gives him a mission. They then instruct or brief Sharp, who's a bit of a sucker at this stage, is not fully in the picture, and he's sent off, and he's likely to get killed all the time. Now, the viewer likes the predictability of that. It's not they are to do something new, it's to ring interesting changes upon that old great Western motif a man is writing out like as in, in, in Unforgiven or Dirty Harry. There's everything in it, really. There's adventure, there's romance, there's battles, you know what I mean? And, and it, it, you know, we're not making something, we're not expecting people to see. We're not making the most profound thing that's ever been done. We, they're just the good stories, the pretty simple stories, but the good stories. And I think that's what you know people like to see. And, and it also, it's set in the Napoleonic Wars, and nobody tackles that sort of thing uh, these days. I read the books, Bernard Cornwall's books, which are you know basically, I think you know they're great tales, great yarns. Um, but what we have here, I mean, it's it's a war comic. I mean. It's um, guts and glory and, uh, you know, to, to actually, you know, to, to put it all together, we work very, very quickly. Sharp, at the beginning of our series, he saves the Duke of Wellington's life from three French dragoons. And Wellington says to him, Sharp, you've done me a damn good turn. Now I'm going to do you a damn bad one. Uh, I'm making you an officer. And the outcome of that is that Sharp, who was a sergeant before this, is uh, not liked by the officers because he's not a gentleman. And equally, the soldiers don't like him because they don't think he's a proper officer. I think the major success is the major himself, uh, Sean Bean. Uh, he's a remarkable, resilient uh, performer. Uh, again, a very generous spirited man, um, has made Sharp very accessible to a wide range of people because of his uh, common baseline that he's, he's arrived uh, to the officer class through a working class start. And that common man issue is very important, I think. Um, Sean's perfect for that. Well, he's got a lot of qualities that I admire and he's worked his way up from the bottom. He's, he's come up and he's come up the hard way. And uh, that's something I admire myself. He's a fair man. He, he, 
he fights what, what he believes is right, you know, and uh, he's an hard hero, you know what I mean? He's a, he's a bit of an hard bastard. <laughs> Sean Bean, I think, has, has turned in a first-rate performance, has Sharp. And I think the audience, they get fed up after a while of watching yet another police series, yet another medical series, yet another legal series. And it's lovely to give them some colour and some adventure. I mean, it's just I mean, absolutely fantastic as you know, Sharp. He is Sharp. And I think if you talk to Sean, you would agree that it's one of his favourite roles. What I wanted with Sean Bean and Darren Malley was having a bit of political fun as well, of course, because I'm a very political writer and I always like rubbing it into Irish audience, particularly that the British Army in the peninsula, as at Waterloo, would be about, you know, 50%, 60% Irish. In fact, our orders were given in Gaelic at Waterloo and Wellington was Irish himself and his heads of intelligence were Irish. So I like reminding those of a provo persuasion in Ireland, you know, that, you know, that's how mixed we were. And the classic mix always has been very politically incorrect to say this, but for First World War brings and bears it out. British officers, Irish troops, and nothing can stand against you. I mean, that was the peninsula, that was Waterloo, the proof of the pudding is in the evening. Uh, and Daryl O'Malley and Sean Bean are perfectly complemented um, English North of Englander, working class guy, Irish kind of small farming, sort of peasant, spalpeen stock. And they make their own commentaries about Irish men and English men and the times they're in it. And I was writing that series right through uh, the Troubles in the North. And I was always aware of it. I mean, I was never not aware. There's references in the early sharps uh, to uh, Harper. It's difficult in taking the king's shilling while his own country is occupied by British troops. There's also black jokes about when a regiment is particularly bad, Harper says, send him to Ireland, sir. You know, <laughs> you know, when they're really bad, he wants them to occupy Ireland. He's, uh, you know, an Irishman who's reluctantly um, working for working in the British Army, but he feels he can be, you know, whatever work he does, he can you know, be proud of that work. But I think it applies not alone in 1811, but to this day of Irish people, you know, strangers in a strange land. And in the British Army then there were miles and miles and miles of them. It's, um, you know, it was difficult then, but I don't think the Irish who came to England in the 50s was any different from the British Army in 1811. Harper has no prospect of promotion in this army because of where he's from. And I think he sees a glory in, in this friend, this man that he loves and cares for. And uh, really he's a nursemaid and minds him and a friend. And, uh, you know, I think Sharp is lucky to have this man, Harper, who, who uh, is totally committed to him. Five to one, lads. What do you say? It's five to one against us the first time they come. But after that, the odds turn in our favour. What do you say, lads? What do you say, lads? Yeah! That's my boys. The producer has to be a very practical person, has to solve all sorts of problems along the line. But far more than that, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the producer must be a dreamer of dreams. If you can't see it all through and visualise it, then you might have a good start uh, to your production, but at the end, there's something will be lacking. And so I'm involved right from the very beginning. The excitement of being a producer is choosing what you want to do, uh, choosing the story, finding the writers, working on the scripts, finding the locations, casting, choosing your director. Uh, that's the excitement. And after that come the headaches. Well, what I like about it is what any director would like about it, really. They gave me all these toys to play around with. I've got soldiers, horses, guns, cannons. I've got marvellous locations. And the good stories, the rattling good stories, Bernard Cornwall's uh, books. The schedules, really, are very, very tight because we get 30 days to do this. We have no second unit. Uh, Equally, you get 30 days if you're doing a morse, you get 30 days if you're doing touch of frost, etc. But we've got all the problems of costumes, of stunts, of guns which don't work, of horses which donate their marks, etc., etc. It's a very tight schedule, very, very tight. Tom Clegg has, has been uh, a great force and has more energy than I could ever muster or ever have had. And never sits down. Is a complete dynamo and and is has made the, made the films what they are. I think he's brilliant, really. I mean, he's just like uh, a battler. He just plods on and on and on, and he and he does it. He does the job that like 
They throw everything at him, throw a massive schedule at him and he gets through it. Somehow, I don't know how he does it, but he does it and he does it well. And uh, I've got a lot of respect for Tom because uh, he never gives in. The problem when you're working on a production of this scale is, is the inertia problem. You've got to arrive in the morning, you've got to know what you're doing. Otherwise, you've got a vast number of people sitting around here all waiting for you to make decisions. So I try to do a lot of homework in advance and um, well, then I know what I'm doing when I come out on the floor. I mean, some of the shots we set up there will probably last about two seconds on the screen. But you need them. And that's why you need so much material. Uh, as any action shot, any action setup only runs for a very, very short time. Otherwise, it becomes really boring. Generally speaking, the more planning you do, the better. And the way we get through the number of setups a day that we achieve on this series. Um, is because it's planned very carefully in advance. All the locations are wrecked, all the shots are set up. Um, we've all done it before, so we know the technique and the way that we like the scenes to work. Mainly, the, it's, it's having a, a team that work together very well, and most of us have worked on this series before. Um, and so it's like a reasonably well-oiled machine. And we walk in on the, in the morning and have a pretty good idea of what we're going to do that day.